Today's video is sponsored by Banks. I don't know about you, but I like to keep my iPad set up so that it's as simple and as functional to use as possible. And that includes my iPad home screen. And while beauty is in the eye of the beholder, when my iPad home screen looks good, I just enjoy using it more. And my guess is you do too. Hi, my name is Rich, and in today's video, I'm going to give you five simple tips on how to create a beautiful iPad home screen, along with a bonus tip at the end of the video. And while you can't do this in five minutes, it takes a little bit of time, it's worth the effort. My personal setup is more minimalist in nature, but you can use these tips to set up your home screen to work the way you work. And when you're finished, my guess is you'll be glad you made the changes. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to quickly remove apps from your home screen. You know when you bring your iPad home, you got all these little apps all over the place. I'm going to show you how to change the wallpaper. You may already know how to do that, but I'll also show you how to download new wallpapers from the internet, how to combine apps and widgets on the home screen in a way that makes sense to you, and how to add useful shortcuts from the Shortcuts app to your home screen. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you a bonus tip about an app I use to make custom widgets. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is just cleaning up your iPad. For me, I just don't like having a whole bunch of apps like this showing up on my home screen. It takes me too long to find what I'm looking for. I like that sort of minimalist view. And when I get my iPad and it's new, I usually just take all these apps off the home screen. Now, there's a difference between deleting them and removing them from the home screen. Now, Apple has an app library, and all your apps live over there, and you can search for an app, too, when you're there. So I like to start out putting all my apps in the app library. And the way that you used to have to do this is you just press and tap and hold and click Remove App, and then Remove from Home Screen. I don't want to delete it. I want to remove it from the home screen. And then you do these one by one, like that. But there's an easier way to do this, and that is tap the screen till everything is jiggling, and then take one app and move it, and then tap all the other apps. Like this, and they all kind of slide underneath your finger. And this takes a little practice to do, but if you can do it, now you slide over and here we're there and now we're in the app library and you have to drop it in one of the app folders like that and then it just populates and now when you go back to the home screen it's all empty but of course we have a second page here so I'll do the same thing again I'll hold and I'll move an app and then I'm gonna tap to get all these apps underneath my finger then I'm going to drag it to the right, and I'm going to put it in one of the folders like that, and it automatically populates everything, and it goes into the correct folder. You don't have to worry about which folder it goes into. Now, when you're done, you've got a clean home screen and your app library there. Now, you may have apps down in the dock, and you can just tap and click Remove App and remove from home screen. It's just easier to do that than to pull them out onto the page and then do everything that I just showed you how to do. So it's easy to remove them quickly from the home screen. It takes another minute or two to get them from the dock. But I like to start like this with everything clean and done. And that's how you quickly clean up your home screen. You know, the next thing that's really important to me is the wallpaper. I tend to like minimalist wallpapers, things that aren't too busy in the background. And for me, too, darker wallpapers seem to work better than lighter wallpapers. If you want to change your wallpaper, all you have to do is go into Settings, go to Wallpaper, choose New Wallpaper, and then you have some choices here. You have some dynamic wallpapers that come with your iPad, depending on which iPad you've purchased. This is the 10th gen base iPad I'm using here. I don't like any of these because they're all too busy, plus they move around on the screen. And I don't like that. And then there are stills that you can choose from. 
and there's a whole bunch of different ones in here that Apple supplies. And then you can actually choose them from your photos as well. So you can click on all photos and choose what you want. I've chosen this one right here. And if you'll notice, it comes up all black. But if you slide around and pinch, you can bring it up like this and move it around. And so I'm going to, and I'm going to click set. And I'm going to click set both because I want this wallpaper to be used for both my lock screen and my home screen. So I set both. It's setting the wallpaper, and like that, we're finished. Now, you may have already known that. You can go in and do that. But for me, a lot of the wallpapers that come with the iPad, I'm not interested in. So you can go to the Internet. We'll go to Safari. And I'll search for Safari here in the app library. We're going to open Safari. And I'll show you from scratch how I get started. So we'll go to a Google search. And I'm going to type in 4K iPad Minimalist Wallpaper. So Google returns a whole bunch of stuff here. But they also have images, which usually, which are Google images. And you can tap on that. And now you have a whole bunch of stuff here that you can look at. And maybe you'll find something that you like. Again, it doesn't have to be a minimalist wall pad. It could be animals, or it could be colors, or it could be trees, or just literally anything you want. There's a wallpaper out there for you. But, but I like these that are simple and sort of dark. So I'll try to find one here. This looks like one. That I could use. Now it comes up over here and if you tap on it you can see the you can quickly see the dimensions of it and this one is 2932 by 2932 which means that's plenty big enough for the iPad screen. You don't want to try to make an iPhone wallpaper show up on an iPad screen. It gets all blown out of proportion and even though you typed in iPad screen up here in the, uh, in the search bar in Google, sometimes you'll get a return of iPhone wallpapers. So now that you found the wallpaper that you like, you can just tap on it and click on Save to Photos, and now you're done. And now you've downloaded a new wallpaper to Photos. And if you want to change your wallpaper, you can go back into Settings, go to Wallpaper, Go to Choose New Wallpaper, All Photos, and here is the photo we just downloaded. And again, you can move it, you can pinch in and out, make it bigger, however you want it to be, and then click Set. And I'm going to set both because I like them both to be the same. And now I've changed my wallpaper to something totally different. Very simple, and that's how you download a wallpaper from the Internet. All right, after you've cleaned up your screen, and after you've got the wallpaper you like, then it's important to begin thinking about what do you want on your home screen? And for me, I don't want a whole bunch of apps that I don't use. In fact, most of the apps that I want will actually fit into the dock. Now, if you've watched this channel at all, you know I like notes and you know I like calendar, that's there. And I know that I want to get Safari in, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find Safari. And if you tap and hold, you can just tap Add to Home Screen, and now it's there. And I'm also going to want to add Photos, because I look at Photos. And now I'm going to simply drag, I'm going to drag those down to the dock. like that. I tend to only put a few applications in the dock, and as I find that I need them, I add them in. I don't add the ones that I might use, and but I don't really use that kind of thing. I just keep the ones that I, want, that I know I'm going to use in the dock, and then if I find myself going back and forth and using one that I haven't put in the dock, I stick it in the dock, and that's how I do that. And so you can just pick and choose the apps you need, and now you have a very clean interface and you have the apps that you want in your dock. 
and that's good to think about. Now, for me, I like to have some widgets that are on there. I like my iPad to show me some information when I first pick it up. So I'm going to add a widget. I'm going to press and hold, and then I'm going to tap on the plus sign up here to add a widget. And the first thing I'm going to add is weather, because as you know, I can't live unless I know what the weather is. So I'm going to add that widget. And now I've got that widget showing up up there. And that's important to me. Now I can just pick it up and I can see that. I also like to know what I've got on my calendar. So I'm going to tap again and I'm going to add a calendar widget like this. I think I'll add that one. And I like to have that. So now I know what the weather is. I know what's coming up on my calendar. I also like to add a reminders widget and I'll add that so that I can see what's on my list of things to do for today and that's typically what I have on mine I have the apps that I need in the dock I have the weather I have the calendar and then I have my reminders up here and right when I pick up my iPad everything is there and ready to go now of course it may be completely different for you but you get the idea of how you can sort of customize your own iPad to make it look and feel the way you want it to be. You know, a few years ago, Apple added shortcuts uh, to the iPad. And a shortcut is a way to do two or three things at one time. And I've made a video on shortcuts. I'll include a link in the description below if you'd like to check that out. But normally you, you have to go into the shortcuts app to trigger the shortcut and to run it. But Maybe you want that shortcut on your home screen. I know I do. So you can add those. And what you do is you go into shortcuts. And I have my split screen shortcuts here. I've got reminders and calendars, notes and calendars, notes and files. And by the way, I could just run them from here. And if I do that, tap on it, I get my notes over here and the files app over there. And by the way, if you ever want to get rid of the split screen. You can just put your finger in the middle and just swipe over like that and now you've got your notes in the full app. But if I go back to shortcuts and I want to add those to it, I just tap the little white circle with three dots in it and I go to edit and I go over to the little share button and I'm going to click on add to home screen and now I'm going to add this icon to the home screen and I'm going to do the same thing with notes and calendars and I'm going to do the same thing with notes and files and now when I go back to my home screen I have those apps so if I want notes and calendars I can tap on that and I have it if I want reminders and calendars I have my reminders and calendars show up and then what I do is I just take those and I drag them down to the dock like this. And I have a little icon. And now I have what I want up here, a very clean screen, the apps I want, including shortcuts apps. And I'm telling you, it just doesn't get any better than that. It's a very simple and easy way to use shortcuts on your home screen. Today's sponsor is Banks. They sent the Infinity Basic iPad stand for me to use and review. This stand has shown up in a couple of other videos I made and people have asked about it. It's flexible yet sturdy and holds small iPads and large iPads, including the 12.9 inch iPad. I like that I can lay it nearly flat and use my Apple Pencil with ease. In fact, you can set it to just about any angle that you need. The base also rotates in a very pleasing, clicky sort of way. It's well built and I'll use it for years to come. If you'd like to purchase this killer stand, then there's a link in the description below. And if you use the promo code richbolin 15 at checkout, you'll get a 15% discount. Honestly, if you're looking for an iPad stand, you can't go wrong with the Banks Infinity stand. Okay, if you've hung around with me this long, I wanted to show you here at the end of the video an app I use to make custom widgets. 
This is a custom widget, and the app I use is called Widgy, W-I-D-G-Y. You can find it on the App Store. They have a free version that'll do a few little things, and then they have a paid version, which you can get really fancy with. I haven't really promoted this on my channel because I like to keep things really simple, but I've had so many people ask about this that I thought it would be best to tell you. Now, you can download Widgy from the App Store, and give it a try if you want to, but it's not the easiest thing to work with. But here is an example of the kind of widget you can put up there. This is all customized. I've got a battery level, the weather and temperature, the date and time, and then the sunrise information there. Again, these widgets are widgets that come from Apple that you can just put up there like I showed you on my other iPad. But this is a Widgy widget. And how Widgy works, I'll just show it to you real quick. We'll pull it up. You can have a whole bunch of different widgets that you can download from their website and you can add these widgets onto your home screen. For example, if I wanted to add another widget here, I could just again tap and hold, hit the plus, go down to the Widgy app, and find a widget here that I like, maybe this one, and I'm going to click on Add Widget. And now I've got it with the date and some other information, and it's unlike any other widget you'll find on the iPad. That's what's appealing about the Widgy app. But it's just a custom app that'll let you do a lot of different little things with it. Again, if you go into Widgy and you want to look at this app and you want to edit it, now you're getting into a whole bunch of information here. Um, I don't want to go into this in too much detail, but it is a way for you to customize your home screen in a very unique way. You'll see this in a lot of YouTube videos around. It's probably more trouble than it's worth, but again, I just wanted to bring that to you and let you know how I've put it on my iPad. And I do like it, I'll be honest with you. It took me a little while to learn how to use it, but now that I know how, it was worth the time. I love getting my home screen set up to work just the way I want it to work. I hope you learned from this tutorial that you can do the same thing. Give it a try. You've got nothing to lose. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.